Six guest rooms. Only three guests. One weary traveller, one British inn. And the law of the land, established for centuries, says that I cannot be refused refreshment or accommodation. It's a fine old tradition, so I'm helping to keep it up. Can I help you? Oh, yes, uh, Miss Julia Jeffel. That's right. Well, who are you? You are expecting me, aren't you? You must be Simon Templer. Gruesome, isn't it? So was your letter. Yes, well, now that you're here, I'm a bit embarrassed about it. You care to amend it? No. Everything I said is true. It's just that I don't want you to think of me as a hysterical female. Well, now that I am here, I don't think you are. I didn't even expect you to reply, much less arrive. Well, I mean, mysterious noises at night in an old inn on the Cornish coast. That is about all you did say. Care to give me some more details? Not now. Mr. Toombs, this is my father. Mr. Jeffrey? Mr. Toombs is staying here for a few days. Well, that's impossible. But I've uh, already signed in. I told you not to accept any more guests. Now, Mr. Jeffrey, that's no way to talk. I'll talk any way I like. She's my daughter. This is also my inn, and I say you can't have a room. But the law says I can. Never mind the law, Mr. Toombs. T-O-M-B-S. Now, let's be sensible about this, shall we? Why do you want to stay here? You won't like it here. You belong in a smart hotel. Sometimes, Mr. Jeffrey, I like to get back to nature in the raw. I'll get my bag. Oh, by the way, uh, where can I park my car? You'll have to leave it in the open. There's no car park undercover here. Couldn't you uh, move that old truck that's outside? It won't move, Mr. Toombs. We took it in settlement of a debt. It's completely unserviceable. It was dead on arrival. An unfortunate choice of words. Told you not to let any more rooms, Julia. Give me a drink. <clears throat> Which is my room? Oh, I'll show it to you. Please forgive my father. He's not himself. Oh, the real Mr. Jeffrey, please stand up. I don't like this other fellow. But if only those men would leave. Are the other guests? He's... he's frightened of them. Oh, who are the three musketeers? Engineers. They're all royal engineers. This is an odd place for a reunion, isn't it? Especially one that's lasted for six weeks so far. Order and order. Well, Mr. Templer, there's your cast list. Three ghastly guests and one frightened innkeeper. And my father. Why is he scared of them? And what's he got involved in? Something which apparently makes other guests unwelcome. And I can be very unwelcome when I try. I'll take a look around tonight. Maybe discover what's making mine reluctant go so nervous. Something perhaps in the previous history of the patient? He's worked overseas most of his life. A few months ago, he sank all his savings into buying this place. The dream of every sun-soaked English exile, to own a rain-soaked English country pub. Well, I gave up my job to help him. You're a good girl. 
Settling in, Mr. Toombs? Very comfortably, thanks. You're wanted in the bar. Of course. There isn't any hot water. Never mind, I personally try to keep out of it. How about you? Julia. Please, go back to your job in London. I'd rather do my worrying here on the spot. What do you mean? What's going on, Father? What have you got involved in? Nothing. Except my own appalling misjudgment in buying this creaking wreck. You've always been truthful with me. Well, thank you. What's that got to do with it? Be truthful now, please. I'll try to forget you said that, Julia. Put it right out of my mind. I can't clear my mind of your fears and worries these past few weeks. You're imagining things. Well, why do you want me to go? This is no place for you. Or you. You've been a changed man since... since they arrived. Nervous, drinking. Well, what hold have they got on you? Why won't you tell me? Well, let me help you. All right, if you insist, help me. In the bar. Same again, Julia, Ogo. Certainly, Captain. That's right, my Bobby. My special favorite brew. Finest whiskey distilled. It's all in the water, you know. Good evening. Is something wrong, gentlemen? You're staring at me as I just materialized from the fine old oak beams. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Big pardon, uh, uh, staying here, sir? Uh, whiskey, please. Overnight visit? Well, I'm not sure yet. I haven't had time to look around. Uh, pretty dull hereabouts. Thank you. Not even much in the way of scenery. Except right in here. Hey, what? What brings you here, then? Oh, well, we haven't been here long. Only a matter of six weeks, isn't it, Mr. Weems? Less. Oh, I thought it was more. Uh, getting away from it all, then? Something like that. Exactly my intention. And if the weary traveller's been good enough for you gentlemen for more than a month, then it's fine with me. I may stay quite some time. Excuse me. Cheers. Hmm? Oh, oh, rather. Hey. Uh, Portmore. Captain. Tombs. Mister. What do you think you're doing? Accounts. I mean, who's the new guest when he's at home? And why isn't he at home? Oh, yes, Mr. Tombs. Yes, I knew you wouldn't like it. What's he doing here? This is an inn. So far as he's concerned, it's an out. I'll get rid of him. Don't give me orders. I'm as aware of the danger of his being here as you are. And why the hell did you let him stay? I didn't. It was Julia. And she shouldn't be here either. Get rid of him. I wish I could get rid of you. If I wasn't in such money trouble, I'd never associate with you. Oh, Portmore. Oh, that maniac cane. I could have made a go of that farm, but could I get a mortgage? Told him I was a captain, didn't mean a thing. All forgotten. The whole country's riddled with ingratitude towards ex-servicemen. Uh, same again, Olga. And mine's a pint. Hello there, Kane. Weems. How is the traffic, old boy? Need you ask? Well, Mr. Kane, we, uh... We have a new guest. Get your order. Guest? Mr. Toombs. Nice to know you, Mr. Kane. Saw your car. Thought you were only here for a drink. Really? Why? Staying long? As long as I like it. Gonna be crowded. In fact, it's crowded already. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that, old man. <laughs> You'd never say anything if your mouth didn't fall open now and again. Drink up and have another cane. Mr. Kane! Mr. Mr. Tom, if you must. But 
Don't you talk to me like you've still got two milk bottle tops on each shoulder. I didn't mean anything. Uh, no, to put it another way, you mean nothing. Kane, uh, Tom, was in the old mob with us. Corporal. Corporal, really? What do you mean by that? I mean, how interesting. Well, let me take this to your room. No, leave it be! Hi, Mr. Kane. Sorry. Easy, old boy. Once and for all, I'm not an old boy. I didn't go to your snobby kind of school. Now, you look here. Mr. Kane, I have decided that it's not very nice to know you. Oh, you care to go into detail? If you insist. Uh, pack your cigarettes, please. You remind me of a, another corporal, the little one with a Charlie Chaplin moustache. I suppose it's because you have an inferiority complex, and rightly so, because you are inferior. Oh, dear, you uh, seem to have spilt your drink. Have mine. Spilt that one, too. Tantrums, Mr. Kane. Touche. It is crowded here, Mr. Jeffro. I'll have a bottle of whiskey in my room, please. And you're wrong, Mr. Williams. It isn't dull hereabouts. That concludes the cabaret for this evening. Mind if I go to bed? You're not doing your job, landlord. Even more special than Mr. Portmore's. Oh, sorry. Captain Portmore. 24 hours from now. Think of it. A fortune. Yes. That'll help us forget this unpleasant incident. Hey, chaps. It happened. I'll never forget. Chaps. So till it knocks your cold.
What's that? This termite-ridden pub, heaving as usual. Sounds like him, moving about. Collapsing into bed. I'd better make sure he's really knocked out. No need. With that quantity of that particular tablet. Dynamite. Enough to blow the weary traveler to its eternal rest. Searchlight. Well, have you got any ideas? Only one so far. <clears throat> you should be in bed. going for a completely unserviceable truck, Julia. Well, Simon, my father can't be involved with them voluntarily. You've seen for yourself how frightened he is of them. We don't know what any of them are involved in yet. It must be something underhand. Underground. It's a cellar door, isn't it? Well, let me come with you. Then you go to bed. You're not dressed for it. Go on. Further. One more session tomorrow and that's it. A hundred thousand pounds. Stop dreaming, keep digging. Oh, I can't help it. A hundred thousand pounds. What does that mean to you? I know what it means to you. Four hundred thousand double whiskies. Dig that tunnel, will you?
gentlemen. Room service. Morning. In exchange for information. They are digging a tunnel. The what? Or to be more precise, they're extending an old one. What for? It isn't the Piccadilly line, I can tell you that. However, there is a railway down there. A railway? Mm -hmm. To dispose of excavated earth in small beer barrels. Now, you mentioned something about room service. You'd better make a show of it before your father comes in brandishing a shotgun and a marriage license. But why? What's it all in aid of? A hundred thousand pounds each. Oh, it can't be that much. What can't? Well, smuggler's treasure. Of course. There are lots of local smuggling legends, especially concerning this inn. Well, it's so close to the sea. Well, that must be it. What a crazy romantic scheme. Thank heavens it's not illegal to find buried treasure. Oh, but it is illegal to keep it, though. I can't tell you how grateful I am to you for solving this mystery. I haven't solved it yet, Julia. The end of the tunnel, that's the end of the story. And you and I are going to find it. But how? By doing a little sightseeing. My father know you're here? I am expected, thank you, Mr. Frog. Mr. Toombs, this is my father's solicitor, Mr. Yesterman. Have we met? Just. No, I meant somewhere before, Mr. Toombs. I don't think so, Mr. Yesterman. You must have driven most of the night from London. Speaking of driving, we have a lot to do. Sightseeing, remember? If you'll excuse. Certainly. a wagon load of laughs. You're Mr. Yesterman. What was his latest assignment? Selling Dracula's castle? In a way. He handled the legal position when my father bought this putrid pub. Complete with private tunnel. Let's see where it leads. The extension leads off the main tunnel just about here. Julia, the end of the line. Luxton Prison. An escape. Well, what do we do now? You're not going to the police? No. No, I'm going to find out which one of those adult delinquents in there can afford to break out. A couple of feet to dig. That'll take us to the drainage pipe. We smash through the pipe, and out he drops. When? 8.30 tonight. We have the dynamite? You don't have to check on everything, Mr. Yesterman. When I disperse fees worth 400,000 pounds, I check on everything. Now, oh, listen, you. All right, all right. We've got the dynamite. We lay the charge in the roof along there. Blow it when he's with us. Bring down the roof and block the suit. Steve already in the van? Yes, yes, of course. Fjold? What do you think we are? I think you're earning 100,000 pounds each. I'm entitled to make sure. Can your client handle a speedboat? You get him out. He'll go away. Uh, talking of money, the old filthy looker, where do we get paid? As soon as the escape's affected. Oh, good show. Well done. Uh, one point, uh, Mr. Yesterman. A postponement will be necessary if Mr. Toombs doesn't leave. But I'm relying on Mr. Jeffrey to see the Templar does leave. Toombs? His name's Toombs? No. That man, Simon Templar. I knew I'd seen him before somewhere. It's a pity you're leaving this inn. You could have erected a plaque. The saint slept here. The saint? The time he was filled with a real halo. Precisely. Simon Templar's not here for the sea air. He's on to us. He's a real danger. Eliminate him. No! Yes. I can leave it to you, can't I? Who else? Julia, you're going without me. I want to make a phone call to a well-informed source in Fleet Street. A private phone call. Where can I do it? In the village store, about four miles on. All right, you do one thing for me, will you? What? 
Keep out of that cellar. Catches loose. Ah, oh, what the hell? Won't be needed after 8.30 tonight. And how's the burn on your leg, Mr. Bellamy? Oh, the medical care here is superb. They couldn't take better care of me if I was due to be hanged. Good. Well, let's get down to business then. Company tax? Hmm. 15,422. You had a good year. Ah. The sale of my country estates. Yes. Why didn't I stick to legitimate business? It's no good crying over spilt milk. Well, one's entitled to a small sob over an entire dairy farm. Nice price. One hundred and seventy-seven thousand pounds, excluding the racing stables. Uh, there is a get-out clause on page three. It operates from today. Uh, this point here, mm -hmm. the acreage, um, typing error, I think. Oh, I'm so sorry. That should read 830, 830, 8.30. Just so long as we get it right. Hmm. 8.30. Right. Yeah, there and are. once again, there, if you don't mind. I'll sign here. There. Thank you, sir. Now, my private checkbook, please. Yes. Pay prison officers benevolent um... Art of Escapology is being exercised on behalf of one Alexander Bellamy, in for life. Oh, I know that name. Wasn't he the head of that bank robbery gang? The bank robbery gang nearly killed the guards and got away with a million and a half pounds. I remember. It was never recovered. So he can afford it. But how do you know it's Bellamy for sure? My well-informed source also informed me the name of Bellamy's solicitor. And you don't get a prize if you guess it. Yes, to me. You've pieced together quite a lot from one telephone call to Fleet Street. Mm -hmm. We know who, we know how, don't know when. Oh, I know that. Is it 8.30 tonight? 8.30, well done. How do you know? Why, well, uh, sort of heard. How? I went to the cellar. I told you not to. Even as a child, I was disobedient. Yes, we know what happens to disobedient children. They get whacked, and that's what I should do to you. For discovering vital information. Okay, but from now on, you do as you're told. Oh, yes, sir. 
First thing you do is leave with me. We're clear right on. Let them think they have a free hand. But we'll be back. No questions. Just leave everything to me and do as you're told. All right. But I must speak to my father. Make one last attempt to get him to see reason. Good luck. I must try. I'm leaving now. So is Mr. Toombs. Why don't you come with us? I, I have to stay on. I've decided to sell the inn. Well, no need for that. When you're expecting such a fantastically profitable customer. Alexander Bellamy. Julia, leave. Just leave. Please, Father. Pull out of this mad scheme. It isn't mad. It's a fine piece of engineering. And the best paid I've ever undertaken. Don't you understand? What future is there for us here? My life savings, every penny tied up in this useless property. No, Julia, no. No. This is my only chance to make a real future. For us? Don't try to persuade me otherwise. I'm not interested. Please! I'm only interested now in what you're going to do. Could never put you in jail. Goodbye, gentlemen. Peace. We don't go ahead while he's alive. <laughs> You're a ruthless little couple, aren't you, all of a sudden? Don't worry. He has five minutes to live. I don't understand. Concentrate. Three sticks of dynamite in his car bonnet. In five minutes from engine start, the saint goes marching in. Thoughts? In our family, that would be a bargain. To buy my father costs a hundred thousand pounds.
five minutes dead. didn't know what he was getting when he hired you two, did he? Come on, stand aside. Come on. That's it. To the inch. How's that for planning? And timing? Shouldn't be, you're almost cured. <clears throat> Going out tomorrow? Tonight, with your help. Call Water. Call him. Nicely. Water!
Everything all right? Okay. Right. Good evening, gentlemen. My clothes? Yes, they're right there. Our money? 100,000 pounds each. What? What's this? Where's our money? Where's my money? It's supposed to be a million for me in there. It was. The suitcase was in the boot of the car. It's a trick. Hey, you double crossing us. It's a trick. You can't go for yourself. Would I be here if I had? Joke over, old man. Where is it? Why, Earth? To bury you in if you don't believe me. Jeff. swung it. But Templar's alive, and you're in with him. Tell me where he is. I'll take care of him. And you and I'll split the whole million and a half. I don't know what you're talking about, you madman. That's no way to talk to your partner. Now, where is he? Here, Corporal. My God, he shot him. What? Kane, he's killed Jeff Roll. I've had enough, old boy. I'm getting out of here. like this, Mr. Jeffro. Oh. Wait for the police. It'll oh. make a very good impression. You'll see. Vacancies? No luggage. I have cash. I can pay it. And talking of cash, you better do something with this at the bank. 75,000 pounds? For me? Your share of the reward money. But that isn't fair. Well, you came back and you got the money out of Yesterman's car. Yes, but you called the police and right on time. Fair division of labor. You saved my father's life. He saved mine. Will they be lenient with him? Oh, I think so, in the circumstances. Well, I can afford a good lawyer now. Yes, you can. Now, come along with me and we'll talk about it. Well, where are we going? Well, like I said, you're a good girl, so you can stay up late and have a grown-up dinner. Your car? I thought it was blown up. I bought a new one with my share of the reward money. Bet it goes like a bomb. Don't say things like that, would you? Care to try it? Wouldn't dare. You drive. I feel safe in your hands. 